Three, two, one. Here we go. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Gonzo Experience. I am David Gonzo Mamano here every Wednesday morning with a great new episode and a great new guest coming on six years, folks. I love it. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the top, uh, I believe, 20% now in the business category for podcasts around the world. Uh, and I firmly believe it's just because the compound effect of doing an episode every Wednesday morning for almost six years. Today I have in the show a great guest and a guest like that I've I've never had a guest like this before. We're gonna we're gonna dig into some stuff that will say you might view this as like we'll say rated R plus. I don't know, but uh, we're gonna get into some good good stuff. That is, I tell people to go behind the curtains when they tell their story, uh, and we're 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 literally gonna go behind the curtains today with some really great stuff to bring your life to the next level in many ways. Very exciting stuff. I want to welcome Sarah Rose. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Really excited to be here. And oh my God, that's amazing. Six years. Like I was telling you, I had a podcast as well and I have to take breaks. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not been consistent the way you have. That's amazing. Well, so it, it's, you know, it's one of the favorite things I do. And, you know, when they say when, when it gives you energy, you just want to continue to do more of it. Right. So, uh, that's great. So Sarah, you are, are really impressive. You have a, a you know, uh, a, a very unique business. Uh, and your bio says you are an intimacy coach, right? And your business, you are the CEO of CEO on Fire. Uh, and uh, so uh, in, in, in you are, um, you've got some great things going on. Uh, you are uh, going to be in the Harvard Business Review coming up for some of the work that you've done. You've recently been in Bloomberg. Uh, you've got a lot of great, great things going on with your business. So without further ado, tell us, you know, first and foremost, give us a, a tease of what your business is. What is what is an intimacy coach? Uh, but then let's back up and learn, you know, uh, so we can all learn about your journey as an entrepreneur and getting there. And then we're going to dig more into your business. So Sarah, the floor is yours. Cool. Thank you. So yes, I'm an executive intimacy coach. I think most executives have heard of executive coaching and what I do is similar, but we focus on executives' private lives. So really just working with high level male executives uh, whose companies are doing at least a million dollars a year, or they've recently sold uh, and helping them optimize. Like they have done so well in their professional lives and then we just help them do as well, maybe even better in their personal lives. That's fantastic. So what what spurred this on? What were you what were you doing to 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 you know get into this this great career? Yeah, so my journey, uh, I was raised by entrepreneurs. My, uh, my dad's the pastor of a church and he wasn't part of a denomination. He kind of went off and did his own thing. And then my mom ran the school that was connected to the church. And so I was raised in that environment. Uh, and then I got married very, very young and my ex-husband, I uh, started a company and I was, you know, there as he was building that. So I had a lot of these influences in my life. Um, and and I always had some sort of, you know, entrepreneurial endeavor in one way or another, uh, even when I was working in corporate. So then it just, that was, I guess, just my drive <laughs> to go that, that route. Oh my God, that was really loud. Did you hear that crash? No, no. Oh, you're, so let's, let's tell everybody that you're in New York City. Uh, yeah. So they may, there may be some traffic uh, incidents going on or at least some horns, but no, I did, I did not hear it. So. Hopefully okay, good. Okay. I'm like, Hopefully everybody's oh, wow, okay. that person's still alive. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will pray for them. Speaking of your uh, father being a pastor. So yeah, where, no, now I'm we're uh, okay. speaking of you, Brian, where, where did you grow up? I know you're in New York City now, but where, where did you grow up? I grew up in Phoenix. Okay, that's right. That's right. We had talked about that. So uh, so he uh, your, your dad just basically kind of started his own church, his own following type of thing. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's very entrepreneurial. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, and then I was 
in this this marriage that I was in, uh, very unhappy as you know, at least half the people <laughs> in the country are that end up divorced. And so I ended up divorced as well uh, after a third or twelve year marriage. Um, and have two children. And so during the marriage, I was trying to find some, some way of having peace in the midst of the situation that I was in. And I did start a yoga and, you know, kind of some more personal development, some spiritual development practices. And over time, I found the path and the practice of Tantra. And that really helped me because I was very shut down. Um, I had a lot of trauma from things that had happened. And that was when I started to feel alive again. And it just, it literally ignited the fire in me. And I felt like, oh my God, like I can do anything. I can be anything. And, um, and so I went to India. I actually took my kids with me. They were super little, took the nannies with us. Uh, and I'm like, we're living in an ashram. And I was there doing Tantra from three o'clock in the morning till 8 p.m. at night. And it was amazing, completely transformed my entire now, now for the for those, you know, of us who don't know the, the, the Gonzo family doesn't know what Tantra is, explain that to us. So Tantra is going to be different depending on who you ask. Um, I use the, and when I'm working with my clients, it's breath, sound, movement, and focus. So these four components that everyone has access to breath, sound, movement, focus, nothing spiritual, nothing esoteric can be used in that context if you want it to be, but it really doesn't have to be. Tantra is a path of personal empowerment, helping you become more confident, more secure in who you are, more integrated internally. So you have more peace and more happiness. Um, in my work, I use it through the lens of sexuality and intimacy and relationships to specifically help people in that area of their lives. Great. All right. Thank you. Excellent. So, uh, uh, so how was it starting the business? I mean, uh, I, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud here, right? That your, uh, your parents, as religious as they are, you call them up and say, Hey, I'm going to start a business about helping, uh, you know, men have better sex. Uh, how'd that go over? <laughs> <laughs> I think now that my parents really understand the impact that I have on people's lives and how much I help them, uh, and they've seen firsthand how, how hard I work and you know, as much dedication that I put into this, uh, that they're very proud of me. <laughs> that is great. Took a little while to get there. It's been a journey. <laughs> yes. <there. laughs> Any other, any other hardships along the way? I mean, you know, there's, you know, when you started, uh, was there a lot of people doing this or were you kind of a pioneer in your own right? I'm still a pioneer in my own right. I don't know of anyone else that's doing this in the way that I'm doing it. Like, yeah, there are some people that teach Tantra, but the way that I've put it together and especially, you know, focused on executives and their unique challenges there, I don't know of anyone else that's doing this. That's great. All right. What, uh, uh, along the way here, since you started the business, tell us about, you know, some, some of the, uh, we, we like to call them crash and learn moments. Have you had any, any crash and learn moments along the way where you, you know, you felt like giving up yet you kept on moving forward and, and got back on top again? Oh yeah. I, I can't even tell you how many times that's happened. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but there is no plan B. And that's the thing, like, it's, this is it, you know, I've put everything into this and I believe in it so much and I do love it and I am so passionate about it. And, um, you know, just <laughs> any, any search of Sarah Rose on the internet, you're going to find all sorts of information. And I don't really see myself being hired by an employer again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you burn the you burn the boats you burn the ships eh? yes so yeah. there like you said there is no plan b and so what do you do you just keep going and um i'm very resilient very very resilient uh but with that being said like i think at those moments in time where it is like it feels like everything's crashing down around me it tends to be 
right, like right before the best time in my business. It's the, it's what comes next. It's what rises from the ashes of those moments. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that, that bring that passion, that fire back again. Yeah. I do find that I, I do find, you know, with myself and other people too, that, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, I'll say often before their, their biggest success, there was kind of like a firestorm right before that. Right. <laughs> you know, but, but it's about like walking through that firestorm to get to that other side of success where a lot of people like see the firestorm and, and they give up and they don't, they don't make it to that success. Right. So speaking of, um, Pastors, uh, so uh, every now and then I listen to the Joel Olstein podcast, and he, he's, it's I, I feel like he's like Tony Robbins and Jesus had a baby, and it's Joel <laughs> Olstein, you know, because yeah. he's, he's like very. I just enjoy his his content, you know. And he talked about how there are um, uh, uh, certain trees in this forest that uh, won't release their uh, their seeds, and they could be in they could be in the tree for dozens of years but they don't release them until there's a fire. And when there it's, and so it, it kind of, uh, I, I guess nature has bred this tree to uh, always survive, right? So if there's a fire, these seeds get released uh, and, uh, and then new trees will grow. And, uh, and, and so he was saying exactly what you're saying is, you know, often there are some very tough times, uh, you know, before you can, you know, grow to that next level. And uh, so I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that uh, oftentimes, you know, the toughest time leads to a new rise in your growth. Uh, and I think it's a really important lesson for entrepreneurs because especially the beginning, oh my God, talk about rejection. And it's like you're in the ring with Rocky and that Russian guy's pounding down you, you know? So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, exactly. So I'm really curious, uh, you know, so you decided you're going to do this business. Um, like how, how did you start? I mean, did you start picking up the phone and say like, oh, hey, Mr. Jones, you're a very successful entrepreneur. I'd like to help you with your sex life. What do you say? I mean, how, how did you get this ball rolling before you were able to do develop the brand and the reputation, you know? So when I got back from India, I was living in Austin at the time and I started teaching locally. So I would teach out of my house. I would teach at yoga studios. I would teach at parties. I started getting invited to teach places. I uh, really built a name for myself there. And then in 2017, that's when I took my company online. So um, my first company was actually called Tantric Activation. And I had a couple of business partners and one was did marketing and one did production. And then, you know, I was the coach. And so we formed Tantric Activation. Uh, and so pre-COVID, I was already 100% online doing all of this. Uh, the, the business partnership ended and then that was again one of those in the ashes moments of how do I how do I recover from this I don't know how to market I don't have the the production like all of this and um, just really being left with this this brand new company where I had content and we'd put all this work into it but there was there was really nothing really when things took off uh, and I saw success immediately, like people really, really wanting this. And of course, um, I already had the, the foundation of people in Austin that were excited and interested. Um, and then I just worked with different marketers, you know, and started doing Facebook ads and uh, really grew my online presence, did a podcast, you know, had, had a, a decent sized Instagram following and did a lot of social media content or social media driven um, uh, marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What brought you to New York City? I love New York. Love it so much. Yeah, I always felt at home here. So I was, I remember being like a middle schooler and I would read the Babysitter's Club books. And one of the girls, her dad lived in New York City and she would like come into the city and shop at Bloomingdale's. And I was like, that's going to be me someday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so great. I left Phoenix when I was 17. I graduated from high school. Um, I had 
full scholarships to Arizona State University, Northern Arizona State University, Northern Arizona University, and uh, University of Arizona. And I didn't want to stay in Arizona. So I said, I'm going to New York to be a model. And I packed up my suitcase and uh, I had some savings bonds that my grandfather had given me for birthdays. I cashed those in. I had like 2000 bucks and I had a friend that let me crash on her couch until I figured it out. Wow. Again, making the parents really excited for you. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're the typical pastor's daughter. Huh? I love it. <laughs> And talk about developing uh, just that determination, picking yourself back up again, like being 17, living in New York City. Yeah, yeah. And I was determined. I was not going back to Arizona. And uh, it was some crazy times, some crazy yeah. times. Well, you you are definitely a, a good lesson in resilience uh, and uh, in boldness. So uh, congratulations for that. Um so let, let's get into a little bit about how you help people. Tell us about, you know, a little bit like when, when people come to you, uh, you know, uh, why, why are they saying like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to raise my hand. I, I want to work with Sarah. Why, you know, what, what, why are they doing that? And then, you know, what are, what are some things that you maybe uh, do in, in the beginning to quote unquote, uh, you know, stop the bleeding and then get them on track to where they need to be? What are, what are some, some of the things going on? Yeah. So, I mean, the executives I work with, a lot of the guys are Inc. 5000 CEOs and they're very, very busy, you know, so they are in massive growth uh, when it comes to their companies. They don't have time to take care of themselves or their relationships. They're just nonstop all the time. Um, and they're putting a lot of money into their companies at that point as well. So, um, but they're also like, seeing the how badly this is impacting their lives and so um the guys that come to work with me they typically have a pretty big pain point you know it's like all right so i'm seeing great success with my company but um my my wife and i aren't having sex anymore or uh you know we're just we've lost that spark we've lost that passion um, there's uh, just, it's definitely a pain. And so they, they come to me, um, you know, maybe sometimes it's sexual, uh, struggles as well as like premature ejaculation, erectile dysfunction, delayed ejaculation. Uh, maybe they feel like they're dependent on porn. Uh, and so we, we work with all of those things men that have recently been divorced and they are really trying to rebuild themselves and heal. So that way in the, their next relationship, they can uh, feel like they did better that time around, you know, feel like they, they have the confidence to get out there and try again. Um, so all these different areas we work with men. That's fantastic. Uh, and in your bio, so you worked with over 2,500 uh, customers, men, since you started in 2017. Yeah, so it hasn't all been men's. Uh, some of them has been women as well. Mm -hmm. So at one time in my company, I was working with a lot of women and I transitioned to work exclusively with men um, for a couple of reasons. There's, I had a lot of requests from women that I do that. You know, women were like, Sarah, we really want men to have this information and to 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 work with you and to be these kind of men that, that they become after the coaching with you. Like, this is what we really want. Uh, and then also there's just, we live in a society right now that while yes, the, the scales are still tipped, you know, in favor of, of men, there's a lot of the, the rising of the feminine and the empowering of the feminine and all these things, which is really great. But at the same time, like men need a support as well. And as society as a whole, unless men and women heal unless we all rise together no one's going to get anywhere uh so i love working with men um i think and also i'm just i'm pretty direct and to the point and um i i think i just have a way of working with men that helps put them at ease and feel comfortable and they can really express themselves not feel shame or judgment and it just works well works well for all of us right uh, so without uh, uh, giving away your secret sauce, of course, 
what are what are some tips you could give for the uh, the, the Gonzo family here on um, on how to be healthy uh, day to day in, in the uh, in, in what you teach? Mm, yeah, so much of it is developing presence, and it is something that you develop. So my my coaching is coaching. We're not therapy. You're not going to sit around and just all these thoughts in your head kind of swirl them around. And I actually find like psychoanalysts, psychoanalysis can really, um, from my experience, even cause more problems because it just makes you more in your head. Uh, What we do is we get you into your body, right? So it's like really connecting with the sensations in your body. And through that, being able to be present in this moment right now, And just that being able to get out of your head, like that provides so much relief from all the stress, all the anxiety, all the things that uh, very busy people deal with on a daily basis. So developing pure presence. Yeah, that's just a a confident presence, even if uh, even if you have to fake it. No, you can't fake it. <laughs> Don't fake it until you make it. It's something that's integrated. Something yes. that's very, very integrated. Uh, and, and you can feel that in a person. You know, when somebody has that inside of them where there's just like a, like a, a depth, like an anchor inside where they feel, uh, you can feel in them that it's, it's, it is, it's just grounded and there's not all this like flighty here, there, all over the place, you know, and that's something that a lot of executives have. And that's actually one of their superpowers is to be able to think of a million things at once. And so it's not getting rid of any of that, but it's being able to like have a place to escape from it and just be able to be and recover and fill yourself back up again. Yeah, that's great. I love it. Well, Sarah, uh, oh, so you're you're going to uh, uh, be have a Harvard Business Review case study. Is that right? Yeah, we have an article coming out next week, at the end of the month. Yeah. Can you can you tease us a little bit about it? Oh, uh, it's um, yeah, it's just looking at the company and what we do. Um, you know, just it's actually uh, I hate to to say this, but it's been a couple months since we wrote it. And I've done so many things since then that (laughs) the details are kind of escaping me at the moment. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I've I've done about 10,000 things since then. I think you're validating that you yourself are a healthy ADHD entrepreneur, right? So yeah. hundred percent, which is why I need what I do just as much as everyone else that I work with. Yeah. Yeah. What do they say? The, uh, the best student is the teacher, right? So yes. <laughs> yes I, well, Sarah, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate uh, the, the, the great work that you're doing. Very unique, very special, very needed. Uh, if people want to learn more and get in touch with you, I know that there are two R's in your name. So you are S-A-R-R-A-H, Sarah Rose. Uh, but if people want to find you and connect with you, what are, what are the best ways to do that? Yeah. So my company is called CEO on fire. The website is CEO on fire.com on LinkedIn. We're backslash CEO on fire. Instagram is CEO on fire. Facebook is CEO on fire. Twitter. Unfortunately, we don't have that right now. Maybe we should change it, but it's, I am Sarah Rose. (laughs) That works too. That works as well. Very good. Yeah. And as always, if anybody uh, listening or watching this wants a personal email connection to Sarah. I'd be happy to do that. You can email me at david at davidmamano.com. Be happy to do that. She's been very responsive to me, very, very uh, uh, friendly and authentic. Uh, and I appreciate that, Sarah. So again, Sarah, thank you for the great work that you're doing. And thank you for sharing some heartbeats with us today. Thanks for having me. Glad you were born. Keep on doing what you're doing. Thanks. Love it. Gonzo family, thank you. I'm glad that each one of you were born as well. Thank you for listening and or watching almost six years in a row. Appreciate you very much. As always, like us. If you like this episode, share it. Uh, Do whatever you can to to, to promote the the Gonzo Experience podcast. Truly appreciate it. And as always, make sure to have a great day and stay awesome.